Good afternoon and welcome to Turner's Cross for the match of the season so far. Cork City and St. Patrick's Athletic in a top of the table meeting which could go a long way towards deciding the destination of the FAI Harp Lager National League Championship for this season. Yes, they don't come much bigger than this. It's Cork against Pats for the second time this season. The two best teams in the country so far, they've proven that, with just a point separating them after 20 matches of the 33-match campaign. They have already met once this season. That was at Richmond Park, and this is how it went. So Pats there with the shots. And it's buried. Pats take the lead. Beautiful skill again here by Osan. But Gilzine, he's got a man on an overlap. Pats from Malloy, it's there, and this should be two. It is. St. Pats running riot. Yes, Trevor Malloy, very much the man of the match that night. But he's missing today through suspension, more of that and all. But we'll look back now to last weekend when Pats moved themselves back to within a single point of the leaders' cork as both main contenders set off on trips to the northwest. Pat Morley gave Cork City the lead in spectacular fashion. What a way to get your first league goal in 22 months. But back came Finn Harps. Jonathan Speak with a cross. Tom Mowen with a header. And that draw put Cork City four points ahead in the title race. St. Pat's produced one of their best performances in the showgrounds. All their goals coming in the second half. Ian Gilzine volleying the first. And then substitute Martin Riley, only on the pitch for three minutes, but he got on the score sheet. And late in the match, two wonderful crosses by Trevor Crawley found the heads of Gilzine first. And then Colin Hawkins at St. Pat's finished 4-1 winners. And here's how it looks at the top of the league. Cork City, that solitary point ahead with 13 matches still to go, including this one. It's a two-horse race for the title. With the current champions and the FAI Cup holders locked together at the top of the Premier. Well, joining me live here at Turner's Cross to look ahead to an eagerly awaited match, Tommy Lynch, formerly the manager of Waterford United, with whom he had considerable success now, a player with Limerick, and Roddy Collins, the manager of Bohemians, who won last night. Congratulations on that. But about this, you've played them both in December and you've got a draw against them both. What do you yeah, think of them? Yeah, two very good sides. They're, they are the two best teams in the league at the moment. Um, two contrasting styles, 4-4-2, uh, uh, Cork and the Pats 5 in the middle. Uh, it'll be an interesting game today. I think midfield is going to be a major um, telling point in the winning of this game. Tommy, we've been down on the pitch. It's uh, a bit spongy on top. It might cut up a bit. Uh, is that going to be a factor now that the rain has started falling as well? I don't think it will, both with the rain we've had over the last month sessions now. Uh, Again, I would like to see how Cork's 4-4-2 against Pat's 3-5-2 will uh, go into opposition, and, and I think that will be the turning point on it. I think we've got to reflect upon the atmosphere that's here. An hour before the game, the shin stand was half full. It's terrific. Great to see the crowds coming back in their droves. I mean, we're sitting here, the, the 8,000 sellout, and uh, hopefully, I mean, we can get this all over the country. I mean, a good game today will bring the crowds back again, and hopefully, as I say, in the weeks ahead, we'll have thousands coming to see League of Ireland football. Roddy, they are special fans in Cork, but Pats aren't without support either. Pats are very good supporters. We've got against Chicago you know, all over the years, very good supporters. Cork are coming out in the numbers, and as, as, as Tommy said, it's fantastic. And it, does, it does create an atmosphere. I mean, if you get a near miss, you'll hear a big crowd roar, and it's fantastic. You know, and I'm very happy to see the crowds here. Fair play to, to Dave Barry and Pat Dolan and Booker for getting them back as brilliant. Well, mentioning Pat Dolan, we're going to hear from him now because down. With Ryan Lugent is the very man of the St. Patrick's Athletic. George, it's uh, rain shower just passed over us. It dampened the, uh, the field, but not the spirits here. A real cup final type of atmosphere down pitch side in Turner's Cross. I'm with Pat Dolan. And Pat, I know you're wearing your St. Pat's hat today, but an atmosphere like this, an occasion like this is great for the league. But well, we dreamed of days like this. What a week it's been for Irish football. All the people that said that Irish people would not support Irish soccer. All the people that wanted to be negative. This is the week when the arena was born, Burn to burn. Whatever happens today, whichever the performances, Burn to burn will be man of the match this week. And I take my hat off to him because he's done what people didn't say was, was possible. And Cork City and St. Pat's, football will be the winner today. This is a great occasion. Any worries about the pitch cutting up and how that might affect the game? Uh, we've seen great games in the National League this season on, on bad pitches, good pitches, whatever pitches. There's tremendous talent in that dressing room and I'm just going to enjoy the occasion. Nobody wants St. Pat's to win more than I than I do. But today, football with you, and it's Irish football. And all those Irish football pundits that had all the answers but really didn't have anything at all. Look at what's going on this week and get behind Irish soccer because it can work. It's working here today in Turner's Cross. Passionate as always, Pat. Enjoy the game, enjoy the atmosphere. George, kick off just a couple of minutes away. I see the teams coming out of the dressing rooms are already to come out of the dressing room. For the moment, it's back to you. 
Yes, there's no question about the atmosphere here. It is a wonderful occasion in Turner's <coughs> Crossing Court. I think you should settle back and enjoy what should be 90 fabulous minutes. Before we join our commentators, let's get a quick what, final word from Roddy. I don't know the mentality of Patrick. If they come to win, they could go a proper. I think if Cork are too impatient, they could be caught in the break. It's, it's interesting. We know a lot more at halftime. Uh, tell me, what about you? I've Cork win. I think they've too much firepower up front, and I fancy I can't see them not scoring. Well, it promises to be a great occasion. Let's look forward to the goal. We'll go to the comedy box now, where we'll hear the dulcet Dublin tones of Owen Hand, and to keep matters nice and even, our very own hometown commentator, Jerk Canning. Thank you, George. Nice introduction, and welcome to Turtles Cross to each and everybody here as the sides are out, and uh, it's a pitch that has been very well prepared by head groundsman here, Jack O'Driscoll. And just look at the leading goal scorers all time. Pat Morley is in sixth position behind Brendan Bradley and Turlough O'Connor. And Donal Leahy, who played here for Cork Celtic and Evergreen United before that, score of 162 goals, but Morley's on 144, and John Caulfield on 116. And straight away, there is a minute's silence here at Turner's Cross in memory of Con Pat Creedon, great supporter of Cork City down the years, father of John, who passed away recently, and also Mrs. Lily O'Flaherty, who is the mother of Tim O'Flaherty of St. Patrick's Athletic. crowd has paid its respect and they'll pay their respect as well to Pat Morley this afternoon his 350th league appearance he has been one of the great servants of uh, Cork football and Irish football down the years at one stage by the way he played in Australia for a team curiously named Sunshine George Cross well he's back at Turner's Cross this afternoon his second spell back here and the story of the meetings of these teams well it's uh, 36 matches so far Cork has won 10, as you can see, St. Pat's 13, 13 draws, and the betting today in the bookies, by the way, is 15 to 8 on a draw this afternoon. And Martin Riley here, who uh, rode in with an absolutely wonderful goal last weekend, is just his second of the season, and he is the only change that uh, St. Pat's have been forced into making for this particular fixture, the top of the table clash. The sides are going to change ends, as you'll see there. And this, a look at the teams then. Cork City, Pat Morley, John Caulfield together up front. Morley, as we say, his 350th league match, but it's Caulfield's 380th. Goalkeeper Noel Mooney has just been voted Jury's Cork Sports Star of the Month for December following his impressive performances in the league and his part in winning the League Cup final against Shamrock Rovers. Well, we see Cork City here, they're sticking with their normal 4-4-2, and what a strong output it is. Very balanced look inside, and of course, they were depending on a lot on the wing play of Colm O'Brien and Ali Carl, how effective they can be. Well, with Trevor Malloy sidelined because of suspension, there was just really one question to occupy manager Liam Buckley's mind. That was Martin Riley or the very pacey Leon Braithwaite. In the end, Riley's outstanding display would call into action at Sligo six days ago, tipped the scales in his direction. St. Patrick's, of course, sticking with the usual 3-5-2, and of course, the strength of those mid-three, which is Eddie Gormley, Martin Russell, and Paul Ozan. Very, very, they're at the game, there's something to stop, and of course, that will make a tough game for Patsy Frayne and Calvin Flanagan. It's a chance this afternoon for close inspection of the respective central defenders. Young in years, high in class. Derek Collin here, whose goal won the cup final replay back in May, ex-Brighton. And Colin Hawkins, a filler in the Irish on a 20 bronze medal winning team, the goal ex-Coventry. Now, will Dave Barry choose one or both for the upcoming league national league match against the Ireland B team in Bray? On February the 9th, he's the manager of that particular team. It's uh, referee John McDermott's 13th league game of the season, and let's hope it's a lucky 13. 11 of those in the Premier Division, two in the first. His assistants this afternoon, JP Kelly and Joe O'Brien, match underway. Rain has eased, and let's hope it's a good one. And it's St. Pat's, of course, attacking the goal away to our right. Put under some pressure here, Trevor Crawley, and that'll be the first corner kick of the match. Well, Trevor Crowley's crosses late in the game against Sligo were hugely influential in the...
deciding the tie ultimately. Terrific crosses into the danger area. And right now called on to do a spot of defending. Cork City's first corner kick taken by Kelvin Flanagan. Patsy Frayne away at the far post, but unable to keep that ball in play. Dave Hill back there as well. Dave Hill was voted man of the match in the recent League Cup final. Replay against, or second leg roller against Shamrock Rovers. Absolutely tremendous atmosphere. Tremendous sense of anticipation here. Internist cross. Home of the Monster Football Association and of course home of uh, many different Cork teams down the years. Trevor Wood. That's Patsy Frayne. Now Morley, a couple of players going to ground. Morley fancying his chances. Well, oh, venomously hit shot that time by Pat Morley. Just telling us why he's in the top uh, six or so of the all-time league goal scorers. But, uh, of course, why wouldn't he be after the great goal he scored last week with that left foot? But trying with the wrong, the right foot from a long way out in these conditions, well worth the effort. Well struck shot. Cork City have settled the better, but it's just a couple of minutes into the match. Pats would have been expecting, of course, that uh, Cork would fire everything at them in the opening half hour. Patsy Frayne again. Now Martin Riley, lovely skill, but couldn't link up with a colleague who is Eddie Gormley. Instead, it's Cronin. Hill. Patsy Frayne. Colin Hawkins coming across, missing it initially. A really fierce atmosphere built up already for this particular match. And referee John McDermott called back uh, John Caulfield there, and also Colin Hawkins. There's just a, as this game started, there was a little off the ball pushing going on between uh, John Caulfield and uh, Colin Hawkins. So let's hope that, that doesn't continue too much. Sam waiting for a colleague to come to his aid. Oh, that's uh, put across by Trevor Crowley towards Colin O'Brien. And the little elbow that time used. It was used by Keith Doyle, and the referee says bodily contact. A fair play. But looking at that again. I see that Keith Doyle, he, he brings his right arm up. That's just... Um, not so sure it was a free kick because it's using the, the arms in the right way. So uh, Cork City will have the free kick. It'll be Patsy Frayne who will take it. Hawkins. Gilzean. Giving away to Cronin. And by O'Brien. And Caulfield was in there at the very end of that taken away from him now Martin Russell this is uh, Riley great pace getting by Hill looking for support stopped by Mooney and in the end it's Derek Collin who has to put the ball out of play explosive start to the match not even five minutes gone So St. Pats will have the throw, it'll be Keith Doyle to take it. Doyle just 90 years of age. Towards Gilzean. Two goals against Sligo, of course, last weekend. For, uh, Ian Gilzean and Martin Riley chipping in with one. Gormley. Should be comfortable for Declan Daly. We've seen again lots and lots of head tense. Bit of work for Crawley to do to keep this ball in play. And the referee has decided it's uh, St. Pat's ball. It's a feature of St. Patrick's play, switching it like that, but I think Trevor Crawley is expecting better service from Eddie Gordy, just trying to have that perhaps a bit tight to him. Going with the free tick taker in towards Riley. 
headed out by Colin O'Brien. Osam takes it down very casually. Now Trevor Crowley. Kins was up there. Likes to get up for set pieces. Doyle. Happy to see that one come back to himself there. Defenders are naturally enough in these conditions, a little bit edgy, you know, they sort of, uh, you look at Keith Doyle there and he's sort of trying to clear that and perhaps the conditions didn't help. That's our Sam. Call him. Russell. Frame coming onto it swiftly. Osam. Flanagan. Derek Collin winning that aerial duel with Ian Gilzee. Marky Lynch. Caulfield kind of thread that ball through. Went down. Referee says no free kick. It's good defence here by Colin Hawkins. You see him trying to retrieve the situation here when it's just yeah. gets a vital touch. Certainly got the first touch on that one. Flanagan again. In here in place of Mark Herrick this afternoon. There had been speculation that it would be Herrick rather than Flanagan who would start the match. Dave Hill, a very seasoned professional player at this stage. Played with Ipswich, played with uh, Scunthorpe as well. Also played with Lincoln. That's Paul Osan. Gilzine trying to link up with Martin Riley. Trolley stopped by Caller. Now Gormley. No Moody here, the 22 year old goalkeeper coming out to take this one. Limerick man who was actually born in London. That's McGuinness. Dave Hill. Good clearance by McGuinness for Gilzine. Gormley. A Sam taking charge of the situation. Riley. And fanning in his back there impressively. Lynch. Russell. One against two. Coldfield the one from Cork City. And Parky Lynch taking command. Very assured defending there from Packy Lynch, using all his experience to tidy up. This is Trevor Crawley. Flanagan towards O'Brien, who was uh, Cork City's leading goal scorer last season with uh, seven goals. Support for four one Northern Ireland International Trevor Wood. Call it properly down towards Morley. He appeals for handball. Son of the former Paul Kibb and uh, Waterford player Jackie Morley. Crowd this afternoon here in Turnus Cross. Around about 10,000 people here. Thankfully, the rain has eased. It's a pleasant afternoon. So Colin Hawkins is up there being marked by Declan Daly. Goes the opposite direction. Oh, 
there seemed to be a whistle, and I think the players stopped for a little while, but it was a phantom whistler somewhere. Pats get it back. Doyle running into the challenge here. Kelvin Flanagan. Made his late debut, in fact, against uh, St. Pat's back in Bishopstown back in 1995. Fourth season with the club. And the shed, as usual, it's full of atmosphere, full of life, packed since about one o'clock today. Derek Collin came to try and knock that one back. This time the referee indicts one of the Cork City players. He was uh, pointing, I think, towards Pat Morley. And maybe that was just something that was said to him, but the incident happened at the other side. It's Gilzine who's picking himself off the ground rather gingerly. Uh, I think you're right here, Jeremy. The referee gives the free kick off to it. Don't see it here, but there wasn't a foul there, but I think it's something that Pat Morley might have said. Lynch the take. Gareth Cronin, former Sunderland player. John Caulfield. Cronin stepping forward again. Trying to put a little bit of pressure on Paul O'Sam, but that uh, carries just too much space. St. Pat's goal kick. These sides will have one more meeting, of course, against one another in this year's championship, and that will be back in Richmond Park with the Stadium of Light, if you please. It's great to see Paul Ozan there trucking um, Pat Morley. I would have thought that, uh, you know, that uh, perhaps his defenders would be doing that job. He, he uses energy in the midfield. Flanagan, stopped by Doyle. Hawkins, Gormley. Under pressure from Patsy Frayne, he gives it away to Ali Cahill, who haven't seen too much of so far. Taking on McGuinness, stopped by Gormley. Pass living dangerously. McGuinness needing Paki Lynch to knock that away, away from danger. Frayne getting it back. Here's Dave Hill. Caulfield contesting, beaten in the air by Paki Lynch again. Gareth Cronin. And that'll be a corner kick. Trevor Crowley getting in with the challenge, a timely intervention. It actually all started there, you see that, uh, that pass that uh, Eddie Gormley makes across square, and uh, Stephen McGuinness just didn't, uh, he wasn't expecting it, and that put him under a bit of pressure. So once again, Pat Morley waits inside, Kelvin Thanning is the taker, and Trevor Wood is put under all kinds of pressure. Jay Phil explaining it all the way there to uh, John McDermott, our match referee. See the corner keepers, they're swinging, they're swinging them deep to the far post. You see big David Cochran coming in, there's a bit of pushing going on. But uh, and that one there, it looked like Paul Ozan got in the, in the way of his own goalkeeper. It didn't look like there was a cork uh, foul there in that particular instance. Frayne gave the call, didn't quite come and collect, however. Stopped by Riley. Now Gormley playing it into space towards Martin Riley. He's a very tricky operator for situations like this. He really caused consternation in the showgrounds at Sligo last weekend. Eddie Gormley, an excellent pass for the boys. He's the space there, and of course Martin Riley has got the pace. Perhaps doesn't get as much weight on the cross. This is one back by Patsy Frey. Now the ageless John Caulfield. Taking on Lynch. Has Cahill there to assist him. Doesn't use him out by Eddie Gormley. Only as far as Patsy Frey. Now Daly. Cox team captain. Planted in there dangerously. John Caulfield was within inches of really troubling Trevor Wood's goal. Well, there's no doubt this is great play here. I mean, 
It's a great ball that's put out to Declan Daly here, and you see it's a brilliant cross in, and John Coffey just doesn't get quite over it enough. Well, what a great move, the way that uh, Cork switched the, switched the play here, get it out to space to Declan Daly, now what a great ball in here. And you see John Coffey just, let's say, just that little bit late coming in. Yes, shaving the crossbar that time. Here's Osam. Riley is the only man ahead of him. And back by Daly again. Now McGuinness. Patsy Frame coming to try and collect in midfield. So Pats playing quite deep. Cronin. One comfortably there by Hawkins, but Frayne again picking it up. Lovely play by Patsy Frayne. Caulfield, trickery as usual in the midfield there, and into the penalty area he went, and uh, referee says, bit of theatrical stuff. Frayne has it back. Cork appealing, but uh, referee not interested in granting a penalty that time. That's Trolley using his body, and this time it is going to be a free kick. That time the foul was on Ollie Cahill. Well, we we'll can see Pats are living dangerous here. You see Stephen McGuinness there, and uh, I don't know. I think St. Pats can feel a little bit fortunate to get away with that one. You see here, he, John Caulfield does him. Cork have the free kick. Kelvin Flanagan planting it in there. Gormley heading it clear. Morley. Bit like old times with Morley and Caulfield in there. And uh, no goal for him this occasion to Trevor Wood. Doyle. Dave Barry, who's uh, had just a couple of years in charge here, but two glorious years this season and last for him. They're cup holders, of course. And Liam Buckley hoping to continue where uh, Pat Dolan let off the reins of power, as it were, last summer by uh, winning the league championship. It's funny, that penalty in incident, you know, you always sort of think it through the game, if it's outside the box, invariably the referee will give it. So, you know, you kind of think, well, why not inside? I think it was a penalty. His dad, Michael Frayne, is uh, in the regional hospital here in Cork. I was asking Patsy beforehand, how's your dad? He says he's pretty OK. Which probably means he'll probably come on for the last 15 minutes of this match. We wish him well. Just a slight little touch by Pat Morley there. Certainly Cork are uh, in charge of this game. So Pat's haven't got their game going at all. The mid, mid three are not, uh, as I say, the passing end that they normally have, not happening yet. Russell struggling to get away from Daly. Cork at the free kick. Flanagan wants to take it quickly. It's kicked away from him. Neither side really wanting to lose here this afternoon, if at all possible. Victory would certainly be a, a huge plus in the respective league campaigns. Russell. Roland coming on for it. Up against Eddie Gorman. Cahill elegantly hit forward. Frame. Go, go. Lovely intricate passing by Cork City. Get up. Cronin. Chance to whip in across. Stopped once again by Trevor Crowley. I think Cork will have noticed that last week when Trevor Crowley got forward. Pat dangerous. Good crosses going in. And today they've tried to get, if at all possible, the men in the wide positions down to try and tie up Trevor Crowley. Hill is in there, Osam was there as well. Doyle knocks it away, stopped by Cronin. Daly. And that was Colin O'Brien, and O'Brien upended by Paul Osam. It'll be a free kick to Cork City. And that kind of illustrates what, what you were saying earlier about uh, foul to the box. Well, we see here, I mean, it's, it's come up, uh, it is a free kick, there's no doubt. Paul Ozam is going for the ball, but uh, just his timing is not quite right. Yeah, 
So now Cork City will be wondering what they can do, but they're a good 10, 15 metres outside the uh, penalty area. Derek Collin looks like he'll be the one to hit it. Frain might also fancy his chances. No, it's going to be Collin back off the wall towards Derek Collin. Derek Declan Daly saying, leave it for me. He plants it in there. Wood rising. Good play by Trevor Wood. Goalkeeper was bowling jersey. Yes, yeah, good, confident goalkeeping. The ball was a long time in the air and there was Cork players coming in them, so he held it very well. Daly. Bring up Colin O'Brien. Back after a long, long spell out through injury, and that's stopped by uh, Colin Hawkins. Well, he really is a crowd favourite here in Turner's Cross, Colin O'Brien. Now the chance are of City, City. It'll be Ollie Cahill to take this corner kick. He hit it in with the left boot, trying to curl it in in front of goalkeeper Trevor Wood. Great deal of space to run up for corner kicks over there. Get on! That's good enough, however. Gormley. Trying to pick out Martin Riley. Stopped by Daly once again. Gilzean gets in the way. Now Frayne. Daly. That's McGuinness. Hawkins. Colin has stayed forward. Flanagan. Dave Hill. O'Brien's just in the end. Has to boot it clear. Gormley. Doyle. So much commitment out on that pitch in Turners Cross this afternoon. Russell. Absolutely no negativity in this match. They're really going for it. Hawkins put under a bit of pressure from Caulfield. Right into the corner flag over there. Hawkins has seen that one before. Flanagan. Frayne. Stopped by McGuinness. And uh, Paulo Sam, who could be a hugely influential figure in midfield in this match yet. Only 23 minutes gone. Crawley. This is Riley. Stopped by Colin. That little last stand is exactly what St. Patrick's need to do. They used to use it. They're using the midfield three there, get it across the field and get uh, Trevor Colley as the wing back coming into it. Gilzean is up there. Now Doyle. Chance to swing one in, stopped by uh, Kelvin Flanagan. That's going to be a St. Pat's corner kick. And now the big man from St. Pat's at the back had come forward to uh, join Ian Gilzean. McGuinness goes up. Hawkins is stepping forward as well. Two sides have scored plenty of goals from set pieces this season. Well, Mooney, the uh, Limerick-based goalkeeper for Cork City, calling out the instructions. Whipped in, and Mooney's under pressure. Did well under pressure. Just to get a fist on that was a really good goalkeeping. Cahill. O'Brien stumbling in the slippery conditions. Hawkins gets it back. McGuinness trying to control it. This is Patsy Frame, two men ahead of him. Morley. This is John Caulfield. Cahill has gone away to the far post. Good pressure play there by Pocky Lynch. Trying to hold it up. Declan Daly's cross in towards Morley. Oh, well, that was the closest we've been yet. Got his first goal in 22 months last weekend. And he was very close to another. Well, there's no doubt. It's a, it's a great cross in here again from Declan Daly. Right deep across the area. And the goalkeeper's not coming for this. He can't. Uh, Trevor uh, Pat Morley then just tried to guide it into that far post. But just outside. 
We see here, it's a lovely one, right, very deep, takes the goalkeeper out of it, he can't come for that. You see, he's just trying to... But just past that far post. A couple of terrific crosses in the match so far from Declan Daly, the Cork City skipper, causing uh, a certain amount of bother in the uh, St. Pat's defence. I have to apologise at this stage because our signal apparently is not 100% throughout the country. We are trying to uh, remedy that situation and we'll do so as speedily as possible. Apologies in the meantime. There's no doubt that the Cork wing play, especially coming from the right-hand side where they're getting Declan Daly, there's two great chances that have been created by Declan. One is like John Caulfield just uh, didn't connect properly and that time there Pat Morley. Riley. Here's Caulfield. Held up for Daly once again. Oh, trying to make a run in on the left hand side. It's with Eddie Gormley. Stopped by Dave Hill. is a player who's given so much wonderful service down the year. Actually made his league debut against Cork City, and that was for Limerick City. <laughs> Trevor Crawley being urged by the fans at Turner's Cross to uh, hurry it up a little bit. Gilzean waiting inside. Martin Riley beaten in the air by Gareth Cronin. A literal sliced off the boot of Trevor Crowley. Oh, Sam. Well, Frame was waiting to lash it clear, but Gilzean got there first. Now Trevor Crowley. Nobody waiting for it. That's towards Cork's two-man attack against the three central defenders. Remember, Cork played 4-4-2, Cork, or uh, Pats, 3-5-2. O'Brien has a lovely ball through, and Caulfield was very nearly on to it. Trevor Wood winning the race from his goal. Great goalkeeping again, anticipating, coming out and being decisive. But it's a superb ball here by Colin O'Brien. It's splitting the defence, it's a brilliant ball in, but it really is excellent goalkeeper here. I mean, he reads it there, he's acting as the sweeper and he comes out and he gets it, he gets his body right behind it, safe gathering up. Paul Osama. Russell, and one touch with Osama again. And tigerishly, Patsy Frame gets into dispossess, now Oli Cattle, it spills loose towards Caulfield, and Osama is in again there. You were mentioning earlier, Owen, the work this fellow is doing back in defence, and he really is putting himself into the tackles this afternoon. There's no doubt, but it's a, it's a, it's a good tackle. You we'll see it. We'll break here, and you see Paul Polo's in here just following up, and he's playing the ball there. In that last piece of play, however, you'll have seen that uh, Stephen McGuinness just got injured into the tackle there. He came off second best. So John Coyle, the physio, is called into action for St. Pat's. First time he's been uh, asked to come out and attend to a player in this match. It's been really end-to-end -end stuff. And yet the nearest we've been to a goal was Pat Morley with that flashing header just a few minutes ago. Well, Pats are considering a substitution, but this is what happened as McGuinness was coming in there on Cahill. It's an awkward reproach he makes that even McGuinness, I mean, he's sideways on, uh, he's coming across his own body, and I think it's perhaps, a, you know, we can see here, the left ankle. Well, among the uh, defenders this afternoon that St. Pats bring in, they, and they've got to will, could play in defence, could also play midfield. Thomas Morgan is a midfield player, Braithwaite and Clark are the other two substitutes that they have for the afternoon. Liam Buckley there standing in front of the uh, dugout. It's a much improved Turner's Cross, of course, in the last few years. They're just the substitutes uh, to there on the right-hand side of that. There he plays in the Irish under-21 team and can't make his way into the St. Pat's uh, National League side. It shows the level of 
Well, see, Steve McGuinness here has been used as a, I'd say, a man marker at the back. And that's the way Liam Lane Buckley likes to do it, is uh, the two actually picking up with Packy Lynch as the sweeper. So, I mean, if Stephen has to go off, I would say, I mean, it's just a one, one on one. So, who it would be is possibly uh, Campbell. Well, Jeff Clark in picture here can also play, of course, in defence as a right back, but. Uh, I think they're going to wait and see whether McGuinness could get back into the match. Right now, Pat's down to 10 players. And Colin Hawkins alongside Packy Lynch probably is an orthodox back four for now. With Colley and uh, Doyle playing deep as well. McGuinness has just gone back into the action, I can tell you, so it's back 11 against 11. Here's Dave Hill. He's played a lot of ground. Stop by Crowley. Pitch beginning to cut up on this near side. Crowley. Well, I was expecting Martin Riley to make a, a better angle for him, to make the pass more positive and more complete. Russell. Good play by Russell. Gormley. Trying to free up uh, Ian Gilzean inside. McGuinness uh, still feeling that leg a little bit, went down rather awkwardly on the ankle, but back in the action. It's McGuinness against Caulfield here. I just feel, you're just looking at St. Patrick's point about that play, we'll talk about in a minute. Here's Morley towards Colin O'Brien, did really well to get ahead on that one. He's uh, a very uh, game young player. The point about St. Patrick's, I just feel that uh, Trevor Malloy, I mean, the way that they, they're used to playing, they're looking for Trevor Malloy, sort of dinking little balls into him, and he's sharp, he's always looking up the last defender. But they're perhaps missing him, because uh, Martin Riley is more looking for the one over the top. And they've got Eddie Gormley trying to uh, play these long balls over the top. Whereas it's not their natural game. Be a bit more patient. It's Caulfield. Headed out there by Crowley. Controlled here by Eddie Gormley. Seeking out Keith Doyle. Pressurised by Colin O'Brien. Playing well. It's Hawkins. Doyle. Run well by Derek Collin. Controlled by Hawkins. This is Ollie Cowan. Once of Northampton Town. Cronin. Hill. Frame. Remember the last time they met, it was St. Pat's. They got two very early goals to uh, Trevor Malloy. And he's out with a suspension this afternoon. Cork taking the match. Alex Pats and McGuinness conceding the corner kick. John Caulfield has a very mixed look on his face. And that actually comes about because Eddie Gormley again trying to get the game going their way, their, their normal way. He tries to pick out. Uh, Martin Russell and overplays it and found that and uh, put the given the position again to him to Cork. Pat Morley played against Cork City in the uh, replay of the cup final. Derek Collins scored then from a corner kick. This time it's defended well by Stephen McGuinness. Back out, however, to Ollie Cahill. Stopped by Gilsey. Flanagan. Pressure on in there and uh, it's Hawkins and Osam together conceding yet another corner kick. Follows. I'm doing great defensive work there. I mean, he really does. It's un unsung hero at the back sometimes. When you see, he gets the final defensive touch, I see here. The up he goes, and he's the one that clears it. Yep. Great cover position. Flanagan pumping it back in from the corner kick. Dave Hill rising, headed out by Osam. Riley missing, not so cool. Oh, that was very close again. Ollie Cahill so very nearly giving Cork City the lead. With just about 10 minutes to go to half time. Yeah, we see Oli Carl hanging back here, the number seven, and he hits it with his left foot. Doesn't really get hold of it, but you see, just again past that uh, far post. They put living dangerously here. That's three opportunities they probably have uh, they've been a bit fortunate with. <laughs> the post itself there coming to St. Pat's rescue. Daly. 
Declan Davy. That's uh, gone out of play. I do think that uh, Liam Buckley will be sort of saying it after me. Come on, we have the extra man in midfield in that three against two in there, and we're not utilising it. But that is such an important part of St. Patrick's play. And as I say, the reason perhaps is because uh, they're used to having Trevor Malloy just to dink the ball. Particularly the, the link between Martin Russell and Trevor Malloy in recent weeks has been tremendous. Leon Braithwaite being spoken to here by Liam Buckley. And he's hardly giving him chapter and verse uh, without considering him as a, an option pretty soon, I would think. He's got tremendous pace, of course. You know his brother, Olympic sprinter for Great Britain. And uh, he may well be part of the St. Pat's 11 on the field pretty soon. Maybe they'll wait till half time. Oh, Sam, lovely skill. Here's Riley. Gormley. Doyle doing well to keep that ball in play. Russell finding Osan. Cahill trying to intervene. Planning it back there, doing a lot of the donkey work in midfield, which is so necessary. Oh, Patsy Frame! It was handled by Ian Gilzean, who very nearly gave the ball away to this uh, very dangerous English board striker. Son of Alan Gilzean, of course. You see Patsy Frame just there. Uh, that's Alan Gilzean. Liam Gilzean should have uh, controlled that better. Daly. Oh, Caulfield left it behind. It was out by Lynch. Frame. And another pass that has uh, put a colleague in some difficulty. This time it's Dave Hill, and now it's Ian Gilzean. Towards O'Reilly, but the flag raised on this near side. But Patsy Frayne has now given a couple of balls away, and this man was very nearly profiting from that. I think that Martin Riley actually should have known that. He, was a, he should have just held back a bit. He, he, he knew that he was kind of drifting into an offside position. We can see here, just hold his line. He can look across the line there, and he should see it. So about seven minutes to go to the break. Still nil-nil. Pushing that time by Flanagan on Martin Russell. Free kick to Pats. Very experienced player, Martin Russell. Joined Pats from Porter down in the close season. So a bit of a break for the St. Pats defence. Now they hope that Ian Gilzean can get free up front and get some decent assistance. Parky Lynch with the free kick. Colin, tower of strength. Russell challenging. Doyle. And there's Colin O'Brien going in for the 50-50 tackle. And the decision goes Cork City's way. flag raised on that far side in front of the new stand which is named after Donny Ford, former secretary of the Monster Football Association, indeed secretary of the great Cork Celtic team of the, uh, the 60s and early 70s. Russell always looks to be in control. Nice ball in towards Gilzean! That's just the amount of space he needed, and he beat two men to get there. Getting there ahead of Hill and uh, Cronin as well. It's a great ball in by Martin Russell. He's actually, you know, he just swings it in there near post. You must, you must give Ian Gilzean great credit there. It's a chance. He's the lead, leading goal scorer with 12 goals, of course. Russell firing it ahead again, but it should be no boonies. He has uh, a lot of experience, Ian Gilzean. This is uh, his most recent effort there, forcing the save out of Booney. That'll be another corner kick. This time Cork goes short, Caulfield to Cahill. 
back towards the man they call Johnny C around here. So Sam. Flanagan just getting a touch on it, it'll be St. Pat's ball. Worth mentioning there that you know that the cross that perhaps the one decent cross that St. Pat's have got in. Uh, the goal scoring chance. So I mean I think Liam Buckley will be hammering home that point at half time. Remember the Scarlet Play, Cork City ahead by one point in the league. And barring a miracle of all miracles, it's going to be one of these two teams who will win the championship this year. Pats are the defending champions. Cork City have won the cup, they've won the League Cup. So we're looking at the two best sides in the country right now. Here comes Gareth Cronin. Little uh, push there by Parky Lynch on John Caulfield. Significantly outside the penalty box, however. Free kick to Cork. Dave Hill's gone forward, Derek Collins has gone forward as well. They're leaving Declan Daly and Gareth Cronin back to mark Martin Riley, the only uh, man staying forward for St. Pat's. Cahill is number seven, Flanagan's alongside him. Some movement inside on the penalty area, but uh, not sufficient movement. Derek Collins looks aghast at the referee. But again, it shows how valuable Paul Ozam is, is in defensive situation there. He was uh, in control of that when that ball came across. Colin O'Brien. He's given the side far more variation since he's come back from a cruciate knee injury. Patsy Frayne, something of a veteran at this stage. There were those who felt he might not come back with Cork City this uh, season. But uh, when available, and he's back just after suspension and injury, he really is uh, a vital cog in midfield. Flanagan towards the aforementioned frame. Stop by your side. It's Russell. It's Trevor Crowley. Gormley. Lynch. Russell. Beautiful passing movement by St. Patrick's Athletic five or six players involved so far. Morley. Nicely on for Flanagan. Before half-time, here's a chance. Caulfield. Taking on Hawkins. A touch on that one. Daly. We're really fine at all by Declan Daly whose uh, last league goal was against Derry City and that was a few years ago that's a great effort this I mean he has been sort of crossing he's getting into these positions and they're expecting a cross perhaps but he just says oh I'm going to have a go at this and it's a lovely strike actually the power of it just brings that little bit high look at it, it actually clips the crossbar well three times now Cork City have managed to uh, hit the frame of the goal Train rising. Crowley. Cronin. It's right into the corner again for Caulfield to try and torment McGuinness. Stays on his feet well. And that's on a bad one. And that's the lead goal. And Todd Morley has got it. In the 45th minute of the match. Todd Morley, just before half time, his second goal in 22 months. The man who is sixth in the all-time leading goal scorers in this league has made it Cork City 1. Stay past Neil. Well, what, a, what, a, what a great goal this is. Look at the skill here, John Caulfield. He turns Stephen McGuinness into and he just clips it in there. And who's dropped off there? Pat Moore at the far post. Beautiful, well-created goal. And well-deserved. Look at that. Just goalkeeper, no chance. Those in the shed rejoice and celebrate. And uh, Dave Barry, while he was celebrating a few seconds ago, right now I'm sure he's considering his halftime team talk. But well, you see, there's no danger here. I mean, but it's great skill from John Caulfield. We leave Stephen McGuinness there, and he's just pulled off. Great, great striker's ability there. Just pulls off his marker. 
Declan Daly celebrating and Cork City with their shed lighting up the flares in front of 10,000 fans take the lead his second league goal of the season City are in front and there's no doubt they're good value for it that's for sure so we're into time added on for injuries and the referee's uh, fourth official as it were Eddie Foley has signalled two minutes still to play Eddie Foley of course who was uh, Ireland's representative of the World Cup Flanagan Gormley Flanagan looking about just to see the possibilities and Morley's through again getting by McGuinness Lynch tries to stop him Questions are seriously asked of the St. Pat's defence. Pat Morley and John Caulfield are, are giving them very difficult moments during this match. Now it's Ali Cahill onto the left boot. Very much a left footed player. And that's the reason why. Just took a little bit too much time with it. He might have just fed in John Caulfield there, who was free inside the box, but he elected to have a go. Most of the chances of the first half have been uh, carved out by Cork City. The league leaders going into the match. There will hardly be many more seconds left in the first half. Gilzean, Cove Pokes in the head. They've got to get their game plan going, St. Pat's. I mean, if you're playing with wing-backs, you can sort of have a gauge it to see, well, how often are they on the ball? OK, we've, they're not in this half. They have not got Trevor Crawley or Keith Doyle free at any particular stage. And that indicates the system is not working for, for reasons of the passing. Well, that was one of the differences, I suppose, between this performance and that which we saw before Christmas when the sides met in Richmond Park. On that occasion, Cork City changed their formation at halftime. 3-5 to themselves to try and counter Pats, who were 2-0 up at that stage. Lynch appealing. So to John Caulfield. The referee brings the first half to a conclusion. Cork City have been much the better side. And Pat Morley's second league goal of the season coming in the 45th minute. Separates the teams. City have hit the uh, frame of the goal on a few occasions. But generally speaking, St. Pat's really have a lot to do. And many questions will be asked at half-time here at Turner's Cross as the sides retire. And this is the goal that separates the teams, fed beautifully into the corner here to John Caulfield. He managed to stay on his feet and then beautifully across towards Pat Morley, who knocked it in with the head. But it was his positional sense getting away from Colin Hawkins that set up the lead goal here at Turner's Cross, home of the Munster Football Association and Cork City. It's Cork City 1, St. Pat's nil. Not much wrong with that. A wonderful first half, enthralling football, chances of plenty, and then at the finish, a goal fashioned by the two old stagers. You can't get much better than that. There's a second half still to come. Can Pats turn it around? Rejoin us after the break. Welcome back to Turner's Cross, where Cork City and St. Pat's have been producing a game you'd expect from the two best teams of the country. Still all to play for in that second half, just 1-0 to Cork at halftime. But now, a word about a couple of programmes coming up here on Network 2. Tomorrow night, Sunday Sport will feature action from the FAI Harp Lager Premier Division. The feature game, Shamrock Rovers against Sligo Rovers. And then next Saturday, the Premiership's back, Coventry City against Liverpool. And we'll have an in-depth interview with Ken Bates, the chairman of Chelsea Football Club. But we're going to turn us across Cork for Cork City against St. Patrick's Athletic. Cork City 1, St. Patrick's Athletic 0. Tommy Lynch, Roddy Collins, Pat Morley's goal. Wonderful goal. Outstanding, great ball down the wing. Uh, Caulfield does great, shakes off McGuinness. Uh, Morley, natural predator, just peels off to the back post. And Caulfield, without even looking, knows where to put it. And uh, here's the ball down the wing. As he, you see. Caulfield did well here too, didn't great, he? Great, great play. Used great upper strength. Doesn't even look up, knows where Morley will be. 
and he's got six yards space there and Pat Morley 116 odd goals. And that's right now, isn't it? Yeah. Getting to the back post, you know, you got that the key, space there just come off the defenders. The key of course was that he got the space, he got away from Colin Hall. Yeah, well good strikers, they just come to the back post, Tom. Drips. You, you, you've been doing it for years, he's been yeah. doing it for years, you come to the back post. Take it out. Take it out. A terrific header too, wasn't it? Super header. As he wasn't without his chances earlier on because we, we, we looked at a couple of incidents earlier on in which Pat Morley had very nearly scored. He certainly does. He's a natural predator. Uh, as I say, one was a shot just drilled at his head, I think, and he's just stuck his head out trying to deflect it towards the goal. And uh, that's why he scores goals. Uh, he has a habit of being in the right place at the right time. OK. Now, on the other hand, with Pats, who threatened earlier on in the game to actually get behind Cork City, yeah. catch him with a break. Yeah, it was a concern I had, George, uh, before the game, that if Cork went for a hell for a letter, they're going to leave a, a gap, or they're going to leave some space between Mooney and, uh, and, and Hill. And it's always a space that... that um, uh, Riley. The, the Riley, the Riley will yeah. attack that space. And I was afraid when it did, when it did happen... This I mean, is there's actually Cork, true. Yeah, there's Cork on the attack. They're all pushed forward. See it there. The push forward in the world. Yeah, Martin Wilson. And have done. And there's the space then between Hill. He gets down here. Not a pace. Keeper should have came there and collected the ball. Uh, wrong option from Riley there. He should have played in Gilles in. He did, he did a better opportunity to score there. Here we go again. There's that space again. Riley gets a good cross here. No one from me. You've got to get a bit of support from midfield. That's the concern I've had. If I was Dave Barry, I'd have that concern. But the goal has changed the complexion of the game now because they won't have to push on so far. But yet, they've still got to get amongst the midfield. They can't allow Pats to get on the ball and play. Well, it, it's a significant thing, isn't it, that Cork are so strong in this stadium. Um, looking back over the 90s, Pats have actually only ever won once here. And the corner count tells the story of the first half, six to one in Cork's favour. Yeah. So it would seem that all Pat's have to going for them is to counterattack. Well, that's the way it's going to be here. I mean, Cork are desperate to get the win. They have a big crowd behind them. They're going for it. They're going for it. They have a very high tempo in the game. They've got to keep that tempo. They cannot step off the gas. Mm -hmm. But Tommy, we've seen Cork, as Roddy's saying, tempo, tempo all the way, and they had more chances. Sean Caulfield himself. Caulfield outstanding again. The two old stages are front with goals galore between them, and as I say, they just happen to get on the end of things. Great ball out, Dickie Daly having a super game out there, whips in another marvellous cross. And as I say, nine times out of ten, Hawkins will head that clear and Caulfield goes for that tenth time. And as I say, he's taken a bit by surprise with it and he just gets on the end. Yeah, and of course then there was Pat Morley having scored the goal at the end. It was a half in which he could have had a hat-trick. Easily. He's uh, one of the best strikers. I cannot say much about him. Ball comes in again, headed out. I think it's just it's a shot that's whipped in. And Pat just natural instinct just to stick your head out and, and deflect it towards the goal. Again, great ball out, break from Pat. Pat helps it on. Caulfield again, another old waiting. Holding up Dickie Davis again, support. Deck, support. And, great yeah. support. And, and there he is peeling off again. Drifting the again post. to the back post. Oh, and just clipping around. the post. Yeah. So, so close. What a performance by Pat Morley then in the half. Um, what a performance by Cork City. But it is still only 1 0. It's only 1 0. As I say, Pats have a great record against them. I think that they're unbeaten in the last nine matches against Cork. And they'll know that. Cork will know that. So uh, I still think there'll be more goals in it as to who will get them. Time will tell. Yeah, and Roddy, your, your thoughts about how it might change for Pats in the second half? Well, Pats are going to have to come and, and take something now of the game now. I, I just hope Cork can keep up the tempo. I hope they're physically fair enough to keep up the tempo. If they do, the, um, I think it'll be a Cork win. Well, we'll see. 45 minutes of exciting football still to come. Just before we take our break, we'll tell you about more football that's coming. There it is. Tonight, Derry City play UCD in the Brandywell at 7. Tomorrow, three of the bottom four in action with the Dork taking on Waterford United, while Sligo play Shamrock Rovers in Talca Park. Both those games kicking off at 3.15. And as we were saying, highlights of Rovers, all the Rovers on Sunday Sport tomorrow night. In Division 1 tonight, it's Cove Ramblers against Longford Town at 7. And Home Farm Everton against Monaghan United at half past 7. But here, in a couple of minutes, it's Cork City against St. Patrick's Athletic. The second half, Cork leading 1-0. The table toppers going for a four-point margin at the top. Can they get it? We'll see. Stay with us. Now 
welcome again to Turner's Cross for our continuing exclusive live coverage of Cork City and St. Patrick's Athletic. Just before the start of the second half, time to tell you about some programmes coming up. Tomorrow, Sunday Sport on Radio 1 starts at the earlier time of midday on Media Wave and includes exclusive live comedy from Old Trafford. Manchester United against Liverpool in the fourth round of the FA Cup, exclusively live on Radio 1 tomorrow. And later on tomorrow night, Sunday Sport on Network 2 features the FAI Harp Lager National League match with extended highlights of the Tonga Park Battle of the Rovers, Shamrock Rovers against Sligo Rovers, as well as uh, goal action from the others. And next Saturday, the Premiership returns with highlights of Coventry and Liverpool, plus an interview with the chairman of Chelsea, Ken Bates. Well, there's the man of the moment, Pat Morley, finding the net right at the end of the half, 1-0 the score. We're going straight back to the comedy box and joining Ger Canning, who's with Owen Hand. Thank you very much indeed, George. Uh, Thank you, Jer. I'll just step in ahead of you. I have Dave Barry with me. Dave, good performance and a goal. You must be a very happy man. Well, it's only half-time, real. You know, Pats are a very good side. We're expecting a lot of pressure in the second half. But are we stand up with that? I, I don't know. You don't get you won't win games by playing uh, well in the first half. So we need a big performance from the lads in the second half. OK, referee, just about to start it. I'll let you go back to the bench. And we'll go back to Jer Carey. Thanks, Dave. Right then, the start of the second half. St. Patrick's Athletic about to get the uh, second half underway. Pats have come into the league in 1951. And one of the few teams to ever win the league in their very first season. What an achievement. St. James's Gate did it. Shamrock Rovers did it. And Bray Wanderers, of course, as well, when they came in, won the first division. Cork City founded in 1984, but they've had a particularly successful year in the last couple of years. And Leon Braithwaite's in, we notice. And I'm just wondering, is it uh, Ian Gilzean who's made way, Owen? Having a little look around here. Yes, Ian Gilzean seems to be the one that's made way. Didn't make a, a great impression in the first half, Ian Gilzean, has to be said. And I think really it's a question of uh, just maybe adjusting the furniture somewhat. Well, it's my system. observation on that is uh, it, it's the system that hasn't been really going well for St. Pat's. I mean, you know, look, uh, Ian Gilzean depends, he thrives. He's a big lad, he depends on, on getting the service, as he did for Martin Russell with that cross there. So we'll see what difference Ian, uh, Liam Braithwaite makes. That's Dave Hill getting it clear. Doyle was coming on to it, Braithwaite's about, and so too is Jerry Collin. Now he may make a big difference with his uh, pace in and around the penalty area. Last time he played was at Oriel Park back on the uh, 26th of November, so he's been itching to get a chance to uh, be back on the first team. Now's his opportunity. Oh Sam, that came back off Declan Daly's back. Hawkins. Went to divergency about St. Pat's in the early seconds. Doyle. This is stopped by Patsy Frayne. Straight at Ozan. Now Gormley. Again, it's Keith Doyle. Pat's camped around the city penalty area. City leading. Frayne. Great breakout here. And he's got the two ageless warriors ahead of him, but this is stopped by another warrior by Stephen McGuinness. Lynch, good ball, Russell, Braithwaite, Doyle pushing in field, here's Osam, Colin comes back to Doyle once again, early pressure, Russell strikes the shot, didn't quite catch it as he would have wished, edge of the penalty area. I think he'd be the first to, to say that this is a great chance, I mean it's just setting up lovely for him. And his body is not just balanced right. But he'd be very disappointed he didn't get much uh, a better contact there. It's a good chance there. That's Morley striking that one ahead towards Ollie Cahill. And Trevor Crowley dispatching it into the uh, stand on the far side. Frayne. Well, it's a completely new partnership now up front for St. Pat's because we're so used to Gilzean and Trevor Malloy being the uh, front two. And now it's Martin Riley and Leon Braithwaite. Braithwaite picking up with Osan. Tries to return possession to him. Osan and Kelvin Flanagan just uh, having a word or two. Flanagan was in quickly on Trevor Crowley. Flanagan. And again, a 
Thomas in strongly there on Pat Morley. The referee having to have a word with Pat Morley. He's uh, really fired up. McGuinness's message is clear. Cork City carrying it forward. Cronin who had a part in the goal in the 45th minute. Russell. O'Reilly oh, rather. Lynch. Parky Lynch is a very, very calm defender. He joined UCD originally from St. Joseph Boys. Here's Garrett Cronin. The falling body there of Alan Cahill and the referee is in swiftly to award a free kick to Cork City. Indicting Eddie Gormley. There is no doubt, there's a free kick there. Uh, Eddie just came in uh, through the back one. So Derek Collins forward, Flanagan takes it. Here's Cahill. Blocked down by Martin Russell. It's with Patsy Frey. Paul Field. Collins there as well. And Eddie Gormley. Good ball by Gormley out as far as Crolly. Flanagan takes it down. Pat Morley, the goal scorer, unable to uh, contain that one. And the referee inside the penalty area there is having words. He's calling inside John Caulfield, giving him the yellow card. As the ball was being knocked across, something happened in there. And John is clearly very furious about that decision. He was holding on to a Packy Lynch there. Lynch himself, incidentally, was sent off by the same referee earlier this season. Hill. Frame poking that one clear. Now Paul O'Sam. Daly falls down to Russell. Next is Braithwaite. A couple of players waiting for it inside. One of them was Martin Russell, but Colin gets there first. Osam again, cleverly playing it into the path there of Keith Doyle. Back off Daly. <laughs> Keith Doyle in front of a packed Turner's cross. Ground which has seen so many memorable matches down the years. Osam, Russell, well ahead tennis, Riley's here. Cork in some trouble before Ali Cahill gets back. That's back in by Russell. This is Gromley. Riley's here as well. Russell didn't quite come down nicely for him. This is Morley instead for Cork City. Playing of the white. Caulfield. Trying to knock it past. Parky Lynch has seen all of that before. Again, calmness personified there. And John Caulfield has to be careful here. Really having his name taken. Really is an occasion now for a very cool head. There's a little bit of needle there between Packy Lynch and then John Caulfield. This is Osan. Crawley. Stopped by Frayne. Osam gets onto it again. Such a clever player. Lovely ball inside to Russell. Blocked up by Daly and Russell second time straight at Mooney. And that was a very good chance. And Russell's had the two best chances for St. Pat's in the second half. But it's engineered bri brilliantly by Paul Ozam here. With his great skill. You see, you see Paul here, and he just did, for a big man, look at this here, the desperate return. And then he just he just he picks out Martin Russell there, who it's great defense by Declan Daly there, by the way, he gets the first block on it. And then of course the second one he just gets it straight to the keeper. Very good little period of play. Paul Field just a bit too much on that one. And Colin O'Brien was waiting for it and would have been free on this right hand side. Oh, Sam, really the architect of that last wonderful piece of play. Watch it once again in reprise here. You see the good block, and that's great defence by Declan Daly. Yes, conditions quite heavy. We've had a lot of rain in Cork overnight. As St. Pat's have taken up the initiative, trailing Cork City by a point in the league, by a goal in the match. 
that's going to be a Cork City throw. Well, Pat, Tim Patrick getting a, you see Trevor and Tra probably in shot there. I mean, I think that's the message at half-time. We've got to get the wing-backs into the play. Martin Russell is becoming a much more in influential player here now in this half. Oh, Sam. Riley. Oh, that's lovely play again by Russell, but not quite able to feed it through as far as Riley. This is Osam. When he's at his most expressive, he's one of the most uh, delightful players to watch in this National League. Lynch. Hawkins. Pat's been given some latitude, up to a point. They still have it, Crawley. Russell trying to feed it to Riley. Hill there instead. Here's Patsy Frey. Now Daly pushing off. I think Patsy Frey has got a problem here. Yes, he's uh, nursing the side of his face. Well, he, he, during the night he had a very severe tooth uh, problem. And I was talking to Dave Barry, like, and uh, there was a doubt whether he was going to play in this game because he was up all through the night. And of course, being the true blue cork uh, warrior that he is, he elects to play. But uh, I think he, he twisted his neck there, and perhaps it just impacted into his into the tooth problem. Well, the obvious replacement should he be forced off as Tim Carey comes on to attend to him would be Mark Herrick. In fact, Frayne was out for uh, three matches through suspension, missed another one through injury. But the physio is just making sure that uh, Cork's number six is okay and able to continue in this match. Early stages of the second half. That's uh, Mark Herrick there. Mark, who was born here in Cork, even though he signed from Galway United, the son of the former Cork Avernians defender John Herrick. Had a spell in Scotland, incidentally, Mark, with Wraith Rovers. And once the physio is called on, of course, the player has to leave the field. May be able to come back on, but that will depend on a quick consultation between Frayne and team manager Dave Barry. He's having a very good game, there's no doubt. But he's been very influential in this game. So it looks as though Mark Herrick is being called up by the manager. Or will it be Brian Barry Murphy? That's also an option, of course. Brian, who's the son of uh, Jimmy Barry Murphy, and Brian is an under-21 international. A terrific prospect. It's always a great strength in the Cork squad. I mean, the reserve strength there to have players of that caliber. Trevor Wood, with the same Pat squad, who themselves are not uh, short of uh, talent all the way down through the ranks. Defending champions against the cup holders. Oh, Sam, trying to get Pats on terms, trying to free Leon Braithwaite here. And that's going to be a corner kick, and Dave Hill is furious with the decision of the referee's assistant. Feeling that he'd allow the ball to go out of play without touching it himself, and also think, feeling that uh, his jersey was being hauled back. But it'll be Eddie Gormley to take the corner kick for St. Patrick's Athletic. Braithwaite at the near post, Riley peeling away. Before all of that, there's going to be a substitution, and Brian Barry Murphy comes into the Cork City team in place of Patsy Frayne, who's gone off injured. And his first responsibility to go to the far post and pick up Martin Riley. Early stages of the second half as Gormley knocks it in towards us. Sam! and Cork all over the place and it's going to be another one Braithwaite was so close well see this is played right the way deep over it's Paul Ozan at the back post he just gets, gets it back into the danger area there and you see that it's a Liam Braithwaite that hits it down off Dave Hill you can see another corner kick but that was a chance you see here Liam Braithwaite if he just gets a better clean head it gets into it it's in the back of the net and this uh, Pats team camped in the Cork City penalty area with so much height but Ian Gilzine off, take it off at half time. Again, it goes to the far post. Barry Murphy gets a touch on it. Riley gets it back in. Out momentarily. And the referee's whistle sounds that it's going to be a free kick to Cork City. As Colin Hawkins was coming through that time. A 
bit of restraining perhaps. Uh, somebody's uh, it's a bit unnecessarily pushing. You've got the pressure, you've got the cork on the rack, and it's silly to concede the free kick then. All the sunlight right into the camera lens in Turner's Cross right now in this match, so it's uh, it's difficult. Some com sun coming in from the uh, Frankfield area, just above the uh, stand. In the distance, Musgrave Park as well. Hill defending busily. We could have a situation, but the cork was playing too deep because we've got Braithwaite and Riley's pace. So they'll be maybe just staying back a little bit far just to be worried about the balls off the top. Eddie Gormley was knocked down that time. Much to the annoyance of the City fans. Pats get themselves a free kick. Martin Russell standing over it. That's Kelvin Flanagan, number eight. It'll be Eddie Gormley to take this. And they have a whole group of players in the penalty area quickly peeling away and making some space, but the free kick wasn't quite precise. It is a shame. I mean, there's no doubt that uh, Eddie Gormley, by his, by his own standards, it, it, it's not, he's not having a good time. Um, and that was a good example, and he just totally overpaced that free kick. Eddie staying back in midfield alongside Paul O'Sam. If anything, Martin Russell has been instructed to push ahead and just in behind the front two, Braithwaite and Riley. That's O'Sam towards Russell. Riley getting a touch. Here's Braithwaite. Ominous for Cork City. Braithwaite leaving it there for Trevor Crowley. Getting a decent ball in. Stopped by Colin. Full scout by Cronin. Eddie Gormley getting there to challenge. O'Sam back towards Packy Lynch. Mostly St. Pat's in the second half, but trailing in the match. Into the corner towards Martin Russell. Again, delivering this ball across the air, and Mooney equals it on this occasion. Tremendous ball over there by Martin Russell. Now perhaps it was a bit too high, uh, Jerry. It, it made it a little bit easier for the goalkeeper. She goes way up here, and the keeper's able to get back to the back stick and then pluck it out of the air. There's Riley. Sound. Early ball down towards the feet of uh, Doyle, but never close enough to it. Anxious faces on the uh, shed end of Turner's Cross, trying to get into good voice and good cheer once again. We've seen their side with a number of close shaves in the second half. The champions will not want to see Cork open up a four-point lead once again, but a uh, full third of the league campaign still to go. And, of course, as I mentioned earlier, Cork City still have to go back to Richmond Park late in the season. That's Crawley delivering the ball in. Here's Braithwaite trying to take it down for the turn. And the referee says goal kick. But Cork City's intensity has dropped quite considerably. That's a dangerous game, actually. I mean, it happened so much. The psychology is, oh, we've got the one goal. We've got the three points if it stays like this. And, of course, you give the initiative to opposition. And uh, how many times we see possession of the goal. And, of course, uh, the Pats are putting the pressure on. Paul Sam has gone down. It'll be a free kick to uh, St. Pats. So well into the last half an hour of this match. Parky Lynch takes responsibility as per usual for the free kick and McGuinness makes his way to the left-hand side of the penalty area. Hawkins was there as well. But so too were Cork City players like Dave Hill crowding out the situation. Again, just a little bit too much on that free kick. Carrying beyond everybody. There really is great excitement to turn afternoon. It's a bit like old times here, a packed house. I can recall being here for Cork Celtic against Shelburne back in 1962, I think it was. It was two months at the time, and that was for a league playoff. And of course, there were other major matches here, European games as well. And here is a chance. Braithwaite's pace carrying him through and drag back. And the ball has gone in, and Pats are level. 
goal. The referee allowed an advantage. St. Pat's fans celebrate. They draw level through substitute Leon Braithwaite. And that has come in the, nine, in the uh, 19th minute of the second half. Well, it's his pace here. We were, we were just talking about that. Cross was giving the initiative here. But it's a scrambled effort in there. I mean, perhaps his first touch was, uh, wasn't the best, but he gets in there to finish it off. So well done to Liam Brett. We can see here, this touch here. He's been pulled back. It's actually a penalty. He's uh, got a thrown it there with pulling the shirt inside the box. So it's uh, well merited. So the referee allows an advantage here as he was being pulled back initially and it went off a defender of Gareth Cronin, but Leon Braithwaite is going to take the credit for that. And Pats, with the manager Liam Buckley, a lot more uh, relieved and happy, I'm sure, at this stage. And their fans, he'll be happy that the voice. He'll be happy that the substitution, that the uh, manager always gets a little bit of satisfaction out of that. And it's the pace of Braithwaite that they've created that. So now it's Colin O'Brien. Knocking it in towards Pat Morley. Trying to return the favour. Oh, Sam doing well. This is Hawkins. Doyle. Colin equal to it. Riley. Flanagan. Part of the County Tipperary influence in this particular Cork City team. Well, now City a bit shocked following that goal, but uh, it was on the cards for quite some time because of the pressure that Pats have been exerting. And Pats coming back again, looking for the lead this time. Good play by Dave Hill. Here's Daly. Osam. O'Brien. Just too much on that for Flanagan. Russell had a lot of space. Certainly Martin Russell is the kind of player that uh, Cork City will have to keep a really close eye on. Nobody is close enough to him. Here's Crowley. Cahill going across to try and block his way. This is Russell once again. Won by Derek Collum. Well, explain. I mean, what's happening is that you've got the Cork defence sort of laying back too deep because of the pace. They're afraid the pace is up against them. Consequently, giving a bit more room in the midfield. And St. Pat's are, are utilising that. You've got Martin Russell getting on the ball. And he's an excellent passer on it. He's, he's coming into the game much more. Eddie Gormley's just starting to come into it a little bit better by his own stance, as I say. So uh, it's Cork. They wanted themselves to blame. And it's Braithwaite again. Taking on that Cork defence. And it's going to be another corner kick. Worrying moments now for the Cork City following here at Turner's Cross. Braithwaite has certainly come in with his first league goal of the season, but it's, it's his pace and his trickery and his cleverness in front of goal that is bamboozling Cork from time to time. Eddie Gormley to take the corner kick. Again, well delivered beyond Noel Mooney. And it'll be another one. It's strange, every corner kick that's been taken has been played right deep to the far post. It's pretty unusual these days. Not one aimed at the near post yet. Well, while Eddie Gormley takes all the corner kicks on the right-hand side, it's Trevor Crowley who takes them on the left-hand side. Paul Osam is up there. I remember one of our most recent uh, live matches. The last uh, match we did, which was uh, Pats against Shoals. Paul Osam getting him with a glancing header late in that game to beside the lead. Here's another chance, and it's Braithwaite once again, yeah. and that's in, and it's McGuinness. Stephen McGuinness getting away from his colleagues. Sheer delight is St. Patrick's Athletics. And the fans have made the 160-mile trek down here as McGuinness celebrates with John Tracy, the assistant manager, and the fans, and it's Cork City 1, St. Pat's 2. What a time to take one to the near post. We just mentioned that. This one's aimed at the near post. It's a very well taken there. Just uh, should be actually finished by Liam Braithwaite there. But stopped and you see Stephen McGuinness is following up and he gets his head to it. Well, just four minutes separating the two St. Patrick's Athletic goals. This the latest in the sunshine of Turner's Cross. Stephen McGuinness steaming in to put his side ahead. Braithwaite in the thick of the action, but it was McGuinness's head which was that decisive final touch.
Well, now the champions with McGuinness's second league goal of the season have really turned this match around, and Cork City are about to make a change, and it looks like Gerald Dobbs is coming in here. Dobbs is in, and the player who's made way is John Caulfield. Well, this is a, an interesting switch by manager Dave Barry. He also had the op opportunity of bringing in Noel Hartigan, who, of course, scored the uh, winning goal in the second leg of the League Cup final. But for now, he's content to bring in Gerald Dobbs. Here's Flanagan. Gormley pushing it down along the line. First time football. Braithwaite again in there. And they wait for a referee's whistle, which doesn't come this time. But we're expecting something. Get nothing. Now we've got Willie Burkus come on as well for Keith Doyle. I don't know if it's an injury there or is it the fact that I, I expect it must be something that uh, was wrong with Keith Doyle. Well, that's a switch which they made also last weekend, uh, Owen. That's Burke. Well, clearly the manager feels at the moment there's not a great deal between Keith Doyle and uh, Willie Burke. So now the question being asked of the team who started the day as league leaders that could finish the afternoon in second place at the table. There's Willie Burke who's come into the action. Experienced campaigner that he is. Now I expect we'll see the psychology going the other way. Will Pat just sit back and you know, sort of say, well, we've got the three points now and give the initiative back to Cork. All very interesting stuff. But uh, at this stage, only about 19 minutes left to play. Burke, beaten in the air by Colin O'Brien. Now Dobbs, just trying to freshen up this cork attack. Morley. scorer Stephen McGuinness and this is how that all came about Trevor Crawley was out there taking the uh, corner kick Braithwaite was steaming in but the man with the decisive and deft touch was McGuinness and Mooney just uh, trying to claw that one away but unsuccessfully Cork City have got themselves a corner kick Ollie Kyle has gone across to take it Dobbs waiting in the penalty area. In fact, it's going to be a free kick. Sun is rather blinding here right now. Under right the eyes of those of us on this side. Cal taking. And that's not a bad header at all. Colin was there. The man who won the cup final replay back in May. Yeah, it's a very good free kick. It's whipped in. You see Derek Hogan. He, he won't be too happy with the contact he, made, he makes on this. So he's just, uh, it is a, it's a free header there. Paul Ozan just lets him get in front of him. And a good front header. It's the back of the net. O'Brien back heading that one. Pats followers will be absolutely thrilled. Those watching live here about a thousand of all. That's Gary Brannigan, of course, part of the backroom team for your own the St. Patrick's League organization, which is a very well run and successful organization. Right now, looking for a third goal. The organization on the field. Trevor Crawley. Good ball across. That was a real chance because Braithwaite had peeled away from the other defenders. Daly. Hawkins. Lynch was uh, trying to get a clearance in there against Gerald Dobbs. Dobbs has gone down. 
free kick to Cork City. Dobbs, incidentally, will be 28 tomorrow. And will he be celebrating his birthday with a point from this particular match? Just 16 minutes to go. Well, it's been up and down the field. Cork City having the best of it in the first half. Might well have been two to three goals ahead at half-time, but Liam Buckley's changes at half-time, bringing in Liam Braithwaite, have worked a treat. Well, you've got to start thinking, well, where's, where's, we were talking about uh, no, no wing play at all coming for St. Patrick's the first half, and now we could say the same about Cork in this half. The wood with the free kick. That's straight at Cahill, who can exert a bigger influence than he's existed, uh, exerted so far in this match. Barry Murphy. Not the best of passes towards Cahill, however. City usually at the very best when Cahill is playing expertly down that left-hand side, swinging in decent crosses. One in the air there by Gormley. It's the Pats fans who are in uh, the best of voices at this stage. Riley trying to get by, stopped by Cronin. McGuinness is coming in, but uh, it's St. Pats who get themselves the free kick. Eddie Gormley, as uh, Hawkins waits inside, it may be Gormley, it may be Trevor Cronin. It's the team captain. Headed out by Barry Murphy. Returned in there by Riley. It should be Mooney's. But Morley does well. There's Leon Braithwaite. And quickly there was Dave Hill. I've got to say that uh, Cork have lost their the balance a bit. I mean, you've got to, look at it here, you've got Colin O'Brien, he, he's kind of uh, drifting inside, perhaps because he's not getting the service out wide. They've got to be used to utilising the players they've got in the best positions that they, they're there for them, and uh, that's not happening this half. Liam Murphy there on the left-hand side, assistant manager to Dave Barry at Cork City. Martin Riley on his knees, appealing for something. Hawkins doing well in the air. Now Cronin pushing ahead. Stopped by Crowley. Well, this would be a very notable victory for St. Pat's if they can achieve a success here at Turner's Cross and take all three points. Gormley. It will also extend uh, an unbeaten record against Cork City, which goes back now to, uh, to ten matches. It's all very narrow for Cork. They've got to get somebody. They're going to need, a, they need somebody to give them inspiration in the middle of the park. I think well, Patsy Friend has missed for that reason. Need somebody to get their passing going. And I say, get it wide. Cronin. Here's Flanagan. Gormley. <laughs> really putting his own defence under serious pressure. So our St. Pat's about to do the double against Cork City, having beaten them 2-0 already. Barry Murphy. Russell, that's clever play again by Martin Russell. Well read by Dave Hill. Now Flanagan. Barry Murphy picking it up. Also trying to pick up the tempo of this match. Towards Dobbs. Lynch was defending really expertly there. Here's Gareth Cronin. 
pumping one in towards Colin O'Brien, one in the air, however, by St. Pat's. Now Martin Russell. Only about 11 minutes of normal playing time remaining. Martin Russell taken down by Declan Daly, and that's going to be a free kick. And the referee may have a word with Declan Daly. So the uh, Cork skipper is back, edge of the penalty area. Yeah, Declan, the, uh, I think he comes out a bit lucky that he didn't get a yellow card there because uh, he did take Martin Riley late. It's going to be the other Martin, Martin Russell, who will take this free kick for Pats. Oh, Sam coming towards it. Mooney likewise. Played out by Cronin, but only as straight as far as Eddie Gormley. Pat Morley trying to play the ball inside Trevor Crawley. Barry Murphy to Dobbs. And the legs taken from under Gerald Dobbs. Well, there's uh, an example, I think, in a way, of inconsistency. Declan Daly, as you say, might have been booked just moments ago. And Colin Hawkins is booked here for, roughly speaking, the same thing. No, it's always a problem. You know, it's a deserved booking here for Colin Hawkins. Here's Cahill. That's a good ball across. Up by Hawkins has just been booked to Osam. Colin O'Brien trying to put in some pressure. There's a vital header by Colin Hawkins there. Good position, especially after just being booked. His concentration stayed good. Right on the end line there, it's again Gerald Dobbs. And this time it's going to be a goal kick. Dobbs who had a spell with uh, Wimbledon, joined Cork City in the summer of uh, 1998 from Dover Athletic. People in the shell, I think, at this stage looking at the watches, just seeing how much time the referee is going to uh, add on. But nine minutes still to play. Obviously some uh, injury time as well. And Colin O'Brien is going off and Noel Hartigan is coming on as Cork City make their final change. This is the man who scored that spectacular goal we showed you in the Cork City versus Dundalk match and also, of course, that spectacular winning goal in the League Cup final. Well, straight away it looks like Cork are going into a 4-3-3. So the front line is Noel Hartigan, Gerald Dobbs and uh, Pat Morley. So City simply having to go for it. Flanagan. Now it's thrown straight at Colin Hawkins. Returned by Riley. Now Braithwaite. A really athletic player. Osam. Daly. Tackle one by Osam. And Flanagan deemed to have held him back. Pats have the free kick. It's being left up to Martin Ross and Colin Hawkins there alongside Leon Braithwaite. Should be the keepers. Gormley, well, returning while a number of uh, Pats players were coming back from clearly offside situations. Strange, actually, that the one set piece that was used short, as I say, was the, the most important thing from St. Patrick's point of view, was the near post corner, the first one they, they used to score the equalising goal from, but everything else has been played too deep, in my opinion. Braithwaite again in there after it, Mooney gets there first. Hartigan beaten in the air, this time by Burke. Daly towards Dobbs. And Burke again getting in with the clearance. A lot of urgency now from Cork City. Daly curling it in beautifully.
and Morley was in there just ahead of goalkeeper Trevor Wood. There's a weird teaser this. And Declan Daly, he hangs it up there. He's been getting some good cross in, but you see Pat Morley bravely going there. It's a, the keeper commits himself. So he just he needed just a little touch, a glancing header. And there's an empty net if he did make it. Oh, Sam. Colin. Well, that's to the uh, feet of the other under-21 international, Colin Hawkins. Braithwaite, down for Riley, touch of handball. Gormley, firing this one, stopped by Daly. Little touch from Eddie Gormley, intended for Paul O'Sam, but uh, picked up by Brian Barry Murphy. Ollie Cahill, being urged on now by the followers of Cork City at Turner's Cross. Good run by Cahill. Still a good run. Blocked at the end of all of that by Colin Hawkins. Dobbs. Firing it in there, but McGuinness, one of St. Pat's heroes this afternoon, heading that one clear. Retrieved there by Barry Murphy again. Dave Hill. Five minutes of actual playing time remaining. Colin. And again, it's McGuinness there. Riley trying to take it over the head of Dave Hill. But off the boot of Hill this time to Leon Braithwaite against Declan Daly. That's a wonderful challenge by Declan Daly. No money keeps it in play, but that was a terrific challenge by the Cork City skipper. He's had a great game, actually, Declan Daly, using all his experience there, which he had to. And again, it's going to be... Declan Daly coming on here. Put in a couple of wonderful crosses in the first half that really tormented St. Pat's defence. Russell. Russell. It's a great ball for Russell inside the cover to Leon Braithwaite outside of the boot. I think he just wanted to keep the pressure on the Cork City goal that time, but he had an option or two. Flanagan. Again, Colin Hawkins trying to come out with that. Barry Murphy. Cahill. Trying to get more into it. Barry Murphy. It's a good ball across. But nobody quite able to get a final touch on it. Morley was there. Hartigan was there as well. Yeah, we've got a situation where you've got Oli Cahill, I mean, he hasn't been getting the service out on the left-hand side there, so he's drifting inside and uh, picking up loose stuff in the middle of the park, so the so are just going to watch uh, Oli there, because uh, he did create a bit of danger there. Left it for Barry Murphy to uh, get in that last cross. But you just get the feeling that, um, you know, that uh, Cork, it's, it's all off the cuff stuff now, trying to get something desperately out of this game. And the fourth official is uh, holding up the uh, indicator on the far side, indicating that Eddie Gormley is going to make his way off. And it's going to be Campbell who comes on. So Paul Campbell who can do such a really good job in midfield, but is called upon by a manager, Liam Buckley. I fancy he actually he's been brought in to watch what I've just spoken about, Ali Cahill drifting in and just picking it up free in midfield. That's Sam. Here's Russell. Riley. Pacey player. Trying to get away from both central defenders. That's a great ball in for Braithwaite, and this can finish it off. And across comes Gareth Cronin. A couple of great redeeming tackles by the two full backs for Cork City in this match of the last five minutes. Martin Roddy has had a very good game, but here. You see, he picks. Of course, there's, there's gaps there. There has to be. But Ian Braithwaite, perhaps his first touch let him down. It's going to be Paul Campbell who will take the uh, corner kick. It's a cross there towards Braithwaite. Riley playing it back in towards Osam. 
And again, the Cork City defence being asked a lot of questions of Dave Hill doing his uh, spot of defending. And Cork City have conceded another corner kick. Uh, it, it, it came out to Martin Riley, and Martin actually is he's a very good striker of the ball there. He got the shot, but was blocked out for a corner kick. Campbell. Russell was holding back Noel Hartigan. Free kick to Cork City. Hit powerfully up towards Colin, who might uh, well be playing the last few minutes of this match up in a forward roll. As City tried to seek an, an equaliser from this and a share of the spoils. City had the better of the first half, Pats the better of the second. Pats with the lead, however. And Cahill once again. And that's Sir Willie Burke. Here's Dobbs. Burke trying to force him wide and uh, just getting a click on it. And it's going to be another corner kick. So the big tall men from uh, Cork City's central defence have gone up. So late in this match, a city presenting itself, chance presenting itself to Cork City. And uh, that's going to be a goal kick. Dave Hill in the thick of it. Yeah, there's a lot of bodies. It's a very packed area here. You can see it's a, a touch there. The referee sees it, obviously, be clear enough to be able to give the goal kick. So the match now in injury time. One by Flanagan for Cork City. Colin trying to free up Pat Morley. And once again, it's Trevor Woods. There's no doubt that, in my opinion, I mean, the first half was influenced so much by, by the fact that Trevor Malloy wasn't playing. Um, you know, the, the regular way the St. Pat's play it, of course, they didn't get the game going. And of course, in the second half, I think the Patsy Frame coming off had a huge influence on this game. Yeah, that'll be some of the talking points after the match is uh, finished. Still a few minutes to go at the uh, referee's discretion. Braithwaite. Of course, you have the situation that Liam Braithwaite came on, and of course, that's altered the whole system of play for four packs. And I think the Cork did sit back too far. A promising move. Cronin. Campbell alongside him. Barry Murphy back healing that one towards Pat Morley. Cahill trying to come forward. Packy Lynch defending. Also, there is Trevor Crowley. Dave Hill runs it back. Firing this one in towards No Hart again. And the header is over the bar from Pat Morley. A late, late chance. But again, he was courageous to get into that situation. It wasn't going to be easy. Well, they're doing the right tactics. They've got the big man, Noel Hartigan, there. Swing it into him. He gets in there. And Pat Morley be very disappointed. He keeps that down. Either side of the goalkeeper, it's the equaliser. You see it there. It's good head back by Noel Hartigan. It's a clear header. Oh, we had Stephen McGuinness uh, breathing down his neck. Osam pushing it to Russell. And the uh, flag raised in the but thankfully it's been one of those matches where the referee's assistants haven't had to flag up and down every few minutes. And there's been a lot of continuity, a lot of flow. Oh, Sam, surrounded by opponents, still got the head to that. Back out by McGuinness, and he was uh, being fouled by Dobbs. So the referee has now played almost three minutes of injury time. There's no doubt that Cork will feel eh, that they, this game should have been wrapped up at half time. But there you go, great credits to St. Pat's. Well, they're not champions for nothing. on the referee John McDermott 
a vital three points about to be earned here at Turner's Cross by champion St. Pat's and they will go top of the uh, Premier Division if it remains 2-1 in their favour and that's how it finishes Liam Buckley will be absolutely delighted celebrating there with his uh, backroom team acknowledging the support of the so many fans who came from Inchicore commiserating with Dave Barry after Pat Morley had given Cork City the lead in the last minute of the first half but then Leon Braithwaite really turned it around his pace, his commitment and in he came to tie up the match and of course he was also involved in the winning goal which was scored by Stephen McGuinness the central defender Braithwaite McGuinness the goal scorer this afternoon for Pats they get the three points they've gone back to the top of the table for a match that Pats came to get something from and they got all three points Polo Sam and Cork City players like uh, Jerry Colin and Noel Hartigan trooping off, very disappointed indeed but it's the Pats fans up there in the stand and up on the terraces away to our right who are going to enjoy the journey back to Dublin the champions are back on top of the Premier League division here in Ireland it's uh, St. Patrick's on top, Cork City now in second place and the final score at a sunny Turner's Cross is Cork City 1 St. Patrick's Athletic 2. And let's go down now to Ryle Nugent. Thank you very much, Joe, uh, with Liam and with Dave. Liam, let me start with you. What did you say at half time to turn that performance around? Well, we couldn't have got any worse than the first half. In fairness, today, the lads had done tremendously well. I would have been happy to get in at nil all. At one nil, it wasn't too bad. We always knew one goal would get us back into it. Uh, we brought on Leon Brightway with a bit of pace, and uh, that happened for us. Um, we took in off. We just struggled a couple of things around, tightened up a little bit better. And uh, in fairness, that's how we, we, we got ourselves back into it. Maybe a draw would have been a fair result, but I'll take the three points. Dave, from your point of view, you said to me at half time you needed to perform for 90 minutes, and you must be disappointed after such a good first half display that you didn't for the second half. Yeah, I think, uh, for us, Liam's side, they, uh, they came out in the second half, threw us into the hole behind the, the front two, and uh, caused us a bit of problems for about quarter an hour, 10 minutes, quarter an hour. But I think uh, holding on to a 1 0 lead in the second half, we were a bit naive. We, we defended too deep, defended our own 18 yard box, which you can't do against Pats, because, um, you know, there was a couple of the two goals were, um, you know, even though the pressure taught in the end, and uh, I, I suppose overall a, a draw would have been a fair result, but fair to them to kill out the second half money. Well, an entertaining game for everybody. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Time to us go back to George Hamilton in the presentation box. Thanks, Ryle. Yes, and that's how it looks tonight. As they enter the final third of the championship race, St. Patrick's Athletic, the champions, move back to the top, leapfrogging over Cork City with a two-point margin. And Cork, of course, third match from the end of the series, have to visit in Shakur once more. And you know, Pats have done it again because Cork City have only lost three times in this league, once here to UCD in December and twice to St. Patrick's Athletic, the champions, which says something, Tommy Lynch, doesn't it? It certainly does. As I say, they, they seem to be their, their hoodoo side. Uh, nothing went right for them in the second half. Complete turnaround. And as Dave said, they're a bit naive, defended very deep. We were saying it here and uh, they pay the penalty in the end. Roddy, two goals, a game of two halves, but it was all St. Pat's of the second. Yeah, but as, as we said at half-time, take your foot off the gas. That's a brain, his pace got him in there, a bit scrappy, but a goal is a goal. Take, take your foot off the gas for passes, too many quality players, give them space and they're going to punish it. And subsequently, there's the result. The goal from Braidwood and then the winner from McGuinness. And this, this was 18 minutes into the half, and within four minutes, the game was right on its head because St. Patrick's Athletic had gone ahead. Yeah, once they went ahead, then they're, they're a good defensive team. I, I, I felt there was no way Cork were going to get back into the game at that stage. Tommy, talk us through this one. Again, uh, they've been hitting far, far post corners all along. They've changed it. It's gone in. Great defending here. It's come out to McGuinness and the uh, keeper, Mooney, wasn't able to get up in time. Back post, great defending. Got a block on it, but... Uh, McGuinness second ball, he, he's in there first, and uh, I, I don't know that they deserve it. Well, that's <laughs> <laughs> controversial. Well, that, that came after 22 minutes and a half. It was a further five minutes before Cork even had a chance, and it was way towards the end of the half before they even had a corner of the second half. It was all down the other end. It certainly was indeed. Uh, I'll just say Cork would probably be saying that they had enough chances in the first half to win the game, and uh, maybe they did. St. Pat's had three or four and, and scored two of them and uh, you've got to give them great credit for that but Cork complete turnaround and never really kick-started till halfway through the second half and the damage is, is, is done by then. Mm.
definitely pass for the league. And Tommy? Well, as a Munster man, I will go for Cork. Um, my heart says Cork, my head probably says Pats. They're, they're cute, they've been there before, and uh, it's up to Cork now to play catch up. Well, it's still 12 matches to go, there's still everything to play for. Tommy Lynch, Ronnie Collins, thank you very much indeed for joining us here on what's been a vibrant occasion, a splendid football match, and Irish football at its finalist. I hope that uh, you've enjoyed our coverage from Turner's Cross this afternoon. Sunday sport tomorrow night to the next soccer. From us for now, bye-bye. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.